Hi, Chasm Artists. Today I'd like to read you a story from Tales from the Stories from the Billabong, rewritten by James Vance Marshall and illustrated by Francis Firebrace. The illustrations in this book inspire me to be creative, to think about using different materials and techniques. I love these illustrations. The story I'm reading for you today is How the Crocodile Got His Scales. In the dream time, a tribe called the Gunivugi tribe lived beside the beautiful slow flowing river. There were no dangerous animals in the river and the Gunivugi often went swimming. One of the tribe's most skillful hunters was a tall, handsome young man whose name was Pukawa. Few could expel, excel, could equal Pukawa with the spear, the fishing net, or the boomerang. But he was vain and foolish, and he fell in love with a married woman. This was against the lore. The elders of the tribe told Pukawa that he was behaving badly, but he laughed at them and went on seeing the woman. The elders were uncertain what to do. Some of them thought Pukawa should be punished. Some thought that he ought to be forgiven. They decided to ask the great spirit for advice. And the great spirit said, give Pukawa one last chance, but tell him that if he doesn't mend his ways, he will be punished and punished severely. The elders did as the great spirit suggested. But a few days later, Pukawa and the woman were seen together beside the river. The tribe lost patience. The woman's husband and relatives and a great count of warriors took their spears and made their way to the river. Pukawa saw them coming and tried to run away, but they cornered him. They flung their spears at him again and again and again, and the spears sank deep into Pukawa's back. He gave a great cry and toppled over into the river. The water closed over his head and he disappeared. The Gunavugi felt sure that Pukawa was dead and that they had seen the last of him, but they were wrong. Some weeks later, a monstrous creature came crawling out of the river. Its back was covered with hard, bony scales. These were the heads of the spears that had sunk into Pukawa's back. The shafts had rotted away in the water. The creature started to crawl towards the place where the Gunavugi were camped, but they saw it coming and drove it back into the river. Then Pukawa, for that is who the creature was, heard the voice of the great spirit. Because you break the lore, you are condemned to live here forever in the water. And because you broke the lore, your children and the children of the Gunavugi will never have fun and play together. And so it came about that whenever the Gunavugi went down to the river to bathe, a crocodile would rush at them and attack them. And whenever a crocodile left the river and crawled onto the land, the Gunavugi would rush at it and attack again. As it was in the dream time, so it is today and perhaps will be forever. Look at this art. Look at those little dots of color and white that go to show. It really helps the colors to pop. So the art project that I thought of doing for this is a resist activity. And we've done crayon resist where you color with a crayon and then you paint over with watercolor um, to see what happens. Um, this is glue resist. So I'm starting with a plain white napkin. This one's cotton. It doesn't really matter if it's cotton or poly blend. Right. Some clear glue. Now clear glue works best, but other liquid glue is fine. And you, then you're gonna um, draw on your napkin. Uh, I used a pencil to sketch it because it will wash out. And then I went over my pencil drawing lines with the clear glue. Then you can paint over it. You can paint in sections or in detail. Do not use watercolor or a water-based paint because when we wash it, it will all wash out. Um, I used acrylic for mine, but you can also use liquid food coloring or even gel food coloring thinned out with a little bit of water. So. I drew the pictures that I wanted on my napkin with a pencil. Then I went over and just sort of traced it and changed it where I wanted to with my glue. And then I painted it. I painted mine in like quarters because that's the way I was feeling that day to tell a story about it. 
I painted it with the acrylics and when it has, once you do the glue, you have to let it dry all the way before you start painting. Otherwise, the paint will just smoosh the glue all over the place. So once the glue is dry, paint it or color it. When the paint or coloring is dry, then you can wash it just in the washer and dryer. And you can get wherever the glue was, we will see white. So I made a heart and a star. I made the word chaw. I made a butterfly. I made an elephant. My things are kind of scattered. They're kind of telling me about chaw. But if you wanted to tell a story or focus on a theme, that would be a great way of doing it. When you're finished, it makes a great wall hanging. Think about great art. Share with us what you've done yourself. See you later.